Columbus State in bad need of a victory here on this Sunday afternoon. Glad you're with us inside the Lumpkin Center. Stephen Williams here with you alongside WRBL News 3 Sports Director Jonathan Husky. Columbus State, 1-4 in conference play, 7-5 overall, and have had some bad losses in the last couple of weeks, so they need a big one here to put them back on the right side of things. UNC Pembroke, a tall task, though, for CSU. 11-4, 2-3 in Peach Belt Conference play, but they've played arguably the toughest Peach Belt schedule to start off the year. CSU will go with Shane Hayward in the middle, BJ Battle, Derek Spear, and RJ Sessions on the outside, Dimitri Davis at the other forward spot, the same five they went with on Friday. For UNC Pembroke, it's Griffin Pittman, along with Quayne Rose, Jihad Wright, Brandon Winford, and Ben Jacobs out there in the black for UNCP. Two teams that both lost on Friday. They both need victories today. And CSU looking to hold serve on its home floor. It'll be Winford and Hayward to jump it up at center court. Shane tapped it a couple of times and CSU in the white. Working right to left as you're looking at it. We'll have the opening possession. Battle lost it, working one-on-one -on -one against Jihad Wright. And so CSU will turn it over on the opening trip. CSU has lost three straight ball games. Every game they've played since we flipped the calendar to 2014 has gone the opposite way. And it's been an issue of holding on to leads as the three fired from the right wing by Kwame and Rose wasn't there. And RJ Sessions started to pass it before he had it and just dropped it out of bounds. Yeah, the Cougars, in, uh, as you said, in, in desperate need of a win here and, and have come close, just having trouble closing out and finishing out ball games. Uh, and then, uh, you know, hopefully they figure something out there. Uh, they're a team that, much like uh, much like the, the women, the way the women's game went earlier today, kind of live and die by the three. They're quick, they're athletic. Uh, just uh, when, they, when the shooting goes cold, that's when they have their issues. Underneath, Jacobs gets his first touch, and right around the rim, Ben Jacobs puts in his first points of the game. UNC Pembroke, a program that is coming off its best season, since becoming a Division II institution last season. Had 22 wins as CSU turns it over and Quamayne Rose turns it into two quick points and Robert Moore is gonna stop things right here. It's a dangerous territory for CSU at the moment because it's a bunch that's deflated with how some of the games they've lost here recently. And it's tough to day after day after day get back in it and stay motivated and stay on top of things, and then you get a team that comes out and jumps on you early, you wonder what the psyche might be of this team going forward. Uh, it's a good time out here from Robert Moore, a minute and one second into the ball game to prevent just that, uh, you know, because that kind of felt like that there was, you know, UNCP could get, get kind of rolling and get, get out early, much like the CSU women did in the women's game, uh, and, and to try to stop that momentum, because you're exactly right, this mentally, the CSU men's team here uh, probably a bit fragile because they've lost some tough ball games here of late. It's a team that very easily could be 4-1 and one in Peach Belt Conference play, and they could be 10-2 and two overall. But instead, they're 7-5 and five and 1-4 and four as Shane Hayward scores the first two for CSU. Right out of the timeout, they go to the big man in the middle. Six times this season, CSU has had a double-digit lead and lost it. Now three of those, they were able to come back and end up winning the game anyway. But they've lost three straight conference games and they've lost three conference games in which they have had that happen to them, in which they've led double digits. BJ Battle off the turnover, missed the mid-range jump shot, and the rebound grabbed by Wright. On the other end, right to the rim. And on the back side, it was Jacobs with the cleanup. Yeah, 
Rose got his fingertips on that one and ended up in the UNCP bench. So CSU will keep it. Friday night, though, CSU led the first 35 minutes of that ball game. And then down the stretch, just did not make enough plays, turned it over, and the shot stopped falling for them. And Francis Marion came all the way back and picked up the victory. Shot clock down to 10 as Derek Spear has it up out on the right wing. Gets the screen from Davis, and he throws it right into the hands of Comain Rose, who streaks to the other end, and with the left hand, a basket and one. Comain Rose is quite the blur down the floor. Not, uh, not how you wanted to start if you're CSU, just having trouble getting into the offense even, having trouble initiating anything on that end of the floor, and UNCP capitalizing, forcing turnovers. That was the question mark coming into this one. Would there be any energy? Would there be any life in this group? And honestly, you look at the people on the floor and you look at the bench for CSU, there's not a lot of energy in the building at the moment. Rose with five. Ben Jacobs has the other four. CSU's only two have come from Shane Hayward. He's only taken two shots in this ball game so far. RJ Sessions drops it down low to Hayward. Hayward threw a double team, missed the shot to the left. They're tied up, and the jump ball arrow facing the Braves' direction. Cougars just struggling getting any kind of a good look at the basket right now. I mean, even that, that shot uh, was forced through a double team, and, you know, Sessions was indecisive in the air with the ball. Just really kind of having a hard time getting going and getting the, the, the offense engaged. CSU playing without Jamad Salim. It's starting point guard because of a high ankle sprain. Kenny Funderburk, its leading scorer, battling a shoulder injury. Played just 11 minutes on Friday night and not starting here today, although he is expected to play significant number of minutes compared to Friday as the three was missed by Rose. Jacobs saved it, though, kept it alive, and Winford finishes it off underneath. So CSU going with different combinations on the floor to make up for the injuries that they've had. And D'Angelo Kirkland mishandles the pass. The other way, CSU is going to get a fortunate break there for them as Jihad Wright couldn't hold on to it on the fast break. Everything just going the Braves' way so far. Cougars unable to get anything going, can't get stops on defense and having trouble getting the offense going on the other end. Five turnovers already for CSU. Ty Harris running the point now off the bench. The floater falling left, he missed the shot. Got a good look, but didn't put it down. And now it's Kasheen Hinton. The other way, the rebound and the shot that wasn't there, and Kirkland, the rebound. Harris trying to push it, steps through everyone. Sets up battle who's double team, so somebody's open. Kasheen Hinton's just running circles down underneath, trying to figure out where his man was. Finally found battle in the corner. 11-2, nearly five minutes gone by. RJ Sessions from the left wing, and maybe that'll get CSU going. The man has been hot over the last couple weeks. Well, had a career night on Friday night in his first collegiate start, and uh, he's a kid, a, a, a real find for Robert Moore, freshman out of Northside High. 23 points Friday night. Hit nine three-pointers in a loss at Lander last Thursday at 29 then. And now is stepping into a starting role. Winford underneath, trying to power through Shane Hayward, draws the foul, and he'll head to the free throw line after the media timeout. 14.58 to go, CSU struggling offensively. UNC Pembroke out to an 11-5 lead.
Robert Moore's bunch walks back out onto the floor, trailing 11-5 here in the early stages. CSU has owned this series all time. 33rd meeting here today. They're 26-6 and is CSU in the first 32 meetings. 12-2 all time here in Columbus. But Robert Moore just 1-2 in the three times he's faced off with UNC Pembroke is Brandon Winford, the redshirt sophomore out of Goldsboro, North Carolina at the free throw line. UNC Pembroke has actually never beat CSU in back-to-back -back meetings. And after a big time victory for them in Pembroke last year, they have the opportunity to do that for the first time here today. Last year it was 82-56 there in North Carolina. Blocking foul coming up against Ben Jacobs as Ty Harris saw a crease, hit the hole hard, and went to the rim. I think that's what CSU is going to have to do here to get some kind of momentum and some kind of energy, just force the ball to the rim, initiate contact, and, and force the Braves to stop them. Harris, the junior out of New Orleans, a junior college transfer, was one of the top junior college point guards in the country last year. One of the tops in the nation in assists. Hasn't quite carved out a role for himself really on this team on a regular nightly basis. But filling in right now with Jamad Salim out with the injury. CSU now trying to get after it a little more defensively. And Kenny Funderburk, who's into the game now, called for the blocking foul. They need Kenny to get going on Friday night. They weren't quite sure how many minutes they were going to play him. He ended up playing 11, but they weren't really effective minutes. He made his only basket and a free throw on an and one as Winford misses the shot. But you could tell Kenny wasn't himself as he wasn't really doing a whole lot as D'Angelo Kirkland goes up for the dunk and Ben Jacobs commits the foul. Again, I like that, forcing the issue, getting to the rim, being physical, and that, kind of creating your own energy. That'll be the second foul on Ben Jacobs. So he'll likely have to head to the bench. D'Angelo Kirkland at the free throw line. CSU needs to do some things to kind of wake up. Building's kind of quiet. The energy level's a little low. They need some things to get going in their favor to liven things up. Jacobs does hit the bench as Reggie Cobia comes into the game. CSU showing a little bit of pressure in the backcourt, trapping at midcourt and forcing the turnover. Now they'll try to push with it. This may be what gets them started and then they throw it out of bounds. Situations like that, that'll sting a little bit. Yeah, missed opportunity. Had, a good, had good numbers, good energy on the possession, but bad pass. Thunderbolt maybe took the eye off it a little bit. Five-point game. We've played six minutes here in Columbus. Bradley gives it up. Pittman from the corner right in front of the CSU bench. One pass sets up an easy shot, and it's a 16-8 game. Hayward with those long arms goes up to get it, watches the defender go by, and with a drop step with the right hand lays it in. Shane, a guy that is not very wide, not a lot of weight packed onto him, but he's very long and lanky there in the middle and can get to the ball, and that time goes up and gets the block, but a ton of body contact as one player goes flying one direction and one the other. Look for a second like he was going to somehow get away with that without a foul. Kind of a late whistle on that play, but would have been surprised there'd been no foul on that one. And Shane, who's... Had a good start to this one offensively. Now picks up his second foul with 13.09 to go in this first half. And CSU, if there's a spot where there's no depth, it's on the interior for them. D'Angelo Kirkland, Shane Hayward, the two that play the bulk of the minutes. Jermaine Morgan can slide in there as he's checking in now in favor of Hayward. But Jermaine is just six foot four. Brandon Dawson can play inside. He's six seven, but Offensively, he's more of an outside presence than he is an inside presence as Winford knocks down both free throws. 
Harris creates a shot for Funderburk, who hits the back rim. Rebound tapped by Morgan into the hands of Kirkland. That's what Jermaine is best at. Doesn't necessarily go and get a ton of rebounds for himself, but he's really good at tipping them to teammates. Tipping with a purpose. Sessions for a second time. Missed from outside, and Winford off a couple of taps, grabs it. Rose comes off the screen, guarded by Sessions. And Kirkland has the steal, the pass deflected. Funderburg trying to scramble to get it, saved it in. Sessions from 10 feet, knocks it down, just about takes Ben Miller out on the sideline as he slid on the ground. An odd sequence there, resulting in two points though. RJ with a quick early five. Rose trying to drop it for Winford. D'Angelo Kirkland with active hands and it's a four on one. Funderburg will throw it up and Morgan couldn't finish it. And CSU getting a little too fancy. Robert Moore just goes head and hands. <laughs> Fitting, I think the way kind of just struggling to get anything going here early but I mean, still only a six-point game. I mean, still very much in it. If they can create some offense and, and find the flow of the game, then, uh, then CSU's still in it. Cobia couldn't get the shot over Kirkland, who did a good job of staying planted on the floor, and CSU has numbers again. This time they drop it off with the bounce pass, and Jermaine Morgan missed it twice. Oh. Back-to-back -back possessions. It looked like he couldn't decide if he was trying, gonna try to dunk it or lay it up that first one, and kind of got caught in between. And that's, that's never a good place to be. And the groans came out on that possession. 18-12 the score, 11-20 to go in this first half. Winford kicks it out after they collapse on the zone and Alex Bradley missed everything Not even downtown. Close. Missed the rim, missed the net, missed the backboard and landed out of bounds. And we've got the under 12 media timeout. CSU trying to hang around, UNC Pembroke up by six with 11.15 to play in the first half. Eighteen twelve the score Friday night. CSU got off to such a good start, and they did it by getting open looks from outside. BJ Battle hit a couple of early threes. RJ Sessions hit a couple of early threes, and that really got CSU going. In this one, RJ Sessions has the only three that CSU has made in three attempts so far. They haven't been getting open looks. UNC Pembroke has done a good job closing out on the perimeter. Kirkland gets a touch underneath, may have traveled, but somehow maneuvered it into the basket. Wasn't a travel if it didn't get called. Had happy feet going, <laughs> the whistle was <laughs> swallowed. Get the, get the puppies organized. And CSU almost gets another steal. Active hands right now for CSU on the defensive end. Cobia, left baseline, back outside. Hinton was calling for it in the corner. Rose has it though with 10 on the shot clock. Rose will try right over the outstretched arms of Ty Harris and another air ball. Again, I don't think that one was tipped either. I think he just missed. BJ Battle in rhythm, in transition, missed the three. That would have been a big one to get things going as we approach the midway point here in the half. Bradley with some nifty, nifty ball handling skills there and gives it up and Hinton fouled on the right side. The foul is over to 
Jermaine Morgan commits the foul. It's his first. That's five already on CSU. As UNC Pembroke will send a couple of subs in. Griffin Pittman back. And the first time we've seen Chris Lindsay, who is a rather large individual. <laughs> Six, seven, 260. How diplomatic of you. I'm not sure CSU has much aside from about 220 on their roster. So he's going to have a big size advantage on anyone. Bradley from NBA range has it bounce out and the rebound last touched by Lindsay. Looking down the list, 225. The heaviest player on the CSU roster and that's 6'7", Brandon Dawson. And he's giving up 35 pounds to Lindsay. The miss by Battle, the follow by Jermaine Morgan. So you look at the scoreboard and as ugly as it's been, it's a two point game and CSU right here. That's what I'm saying. If, if they can somehow kind of get into the flow of the game, get in some kind of rhythm, then they can still, you know, take a lead, get get momentum on their side. It's just fine, and everything's just been choppy. It's just been static so far for, for CSU on the offensive side. Crowd wanted to travel on Hinton, didn't get it. He gets a look from the corner, and the wide open three is knocked down. Kasheen Hinton with his first basket. Morgan to the corner. Kirkland's gonna put it on the floor. And we've got an offensive foul. Wipe the basket off. And D'Angelo Kirkland called for his first. This is the big man Lindsay stepping in that time. Drawing the charge. We've played a little over 11 minutes and you look down and BJ Battle scoreless. Kenny Funderburk scoreless. Tough for CSU to be in any kind of rhythm or control if those two guys don't get going offensively. RJ Sessions has five. Those three are the guys that really heated up for CSU. Bradley gets the screen and now a mismatch, giving up a full foot to D'Angelo Kirkland. Lindsay over the top, the jumper didn't go, and it's last touched by Jihad Wright. Again, though, it just doesn't look like a whole lot of life. No, it doesn't. And, and what you'd like to see in a, in a good basketball game when everything's kind of rolling and clicking is that each possession kind of flows into each other. But right now with, with CSU, the way they're, they're just kind of struggling offensively, each possession is independent of the other one, of the others. And, and there's no flow, no kind of rhythm. And that's, that's I think, half the battle in getting, getting going offensively. Pembroke had numbers for a second, mishandled the pass though. Still a five point game as D'Angelo Kirkland, who has been good on the defensive end of the floor so far in this one, poked it away. It'll be UNC Pembroke basketball, but we hit the under eight media timeout. 7.55, still only a five point game. UNC Pembroke holding on to a 21-16 edge. UNC Pembroke has lost two straight ball games. They've lost the first two of these three in a row they had on the road, losing at Georgia Regents 76-72, losing Friday night at Georgia Southwestern 80-68. They've played probably the toughest schedule out of the gate inside the Peach Belt Conference, having already played USC Aiken and then Georgia Regents and Georgia Southwestern, a pair of teams that are around the rankings, if not in them already. So it's been, a, it's been a tough stretch for them so far this season, and now a double dribble coming up, called against Brandon Winford. 
Ben Miller took over this program, though, six years ago. He's in his sixth season. In his first year, they went 6-21. and 21. Then they won 9, then they won 18, had a year where they slipped down to 17, and then last year, 22, the most they've ever won as a Division II program. And he's a guy with a great coaching pedigree as the shot was too strong by Morgan. He spent 10 years as an assistant coach at Kansas, coached under Roy Williams, coached under Bill Self. Spent four years at Missouri State. He's a guy that's done some things in the coaching world as Winford goes off the glass for two. Battle spotting up, shoots over Bradley and the three wasn't there, rebound into the hands of Wright. Dangerous time here for CSU in, in danger of the game getting away from him here. Seems like just a little bit ago it was a four point game. It's ballooned to seven and CSU having trouble getting points on the board. And make it nine as Winford is in the double figures. He has 10 closing out on his 12 point a game average. CSU just hasn't had a lot go right for it. It needs some things to go in its favor as Kenny Funderburg will have a chance to score his first points from the free throw line. Foul goes on Jihad Wright, it's his first. It's only the third committed by UNCP in this one. Kenny, a guy that's very explosive. A junior college transfer from Aiken Tech over in South Carolina. Scored double digits in 10 games this season. Had 20 or more in four games. Had 26 against West Georgia but the shoulder injury has limited him a little bit here. As CSU will put RJ Sessions back on the floor as well as D'Angelo Kirkland. Kenny generally pretty reliable from the free throw line. This is the second. Eight point game, 25-17 and UNC Pembroke with possession and a chance to lead by double figures for the first time. And they'll do so as nobody boxed out Jihad right on the rebound. Funderburg lost it at the free throw line, but a foul coming up. Ben Miller not pleased. But it'll save CSU from a turnover as Jihad Wright commits his second foul. CSU just hasn't gotten open looks. RJ Sessions got a clean look that time, but he hit the front rim as the rebounds tapped around. And a good job by CSU to fight to keep it alive and they'll get a second chance gotten the looks that they've gotten just hadn't been able to knock down shots either and the struggle that they've been offensively you've got to hit the looks you get and they just haven't been able to do that. Morgan had it knocked away from him after he caught the pass right at the rim so CSU holds on to it. 5.55 to go in this first half in a 10 point game. CSU a team that thrives off making three point shots. They haven't made them in this one as RJ Sessions hits it from 15. RJ with seven. Still 37% from the floor is, is not gonna win a whole lot of ball games. And only one three point basket made. Morgan grabs a rebound that time. CSU has gotta keep it to one shot. Can't allow him to get on the glass. Funderburg drives baseline and lost it. Just dribbled into traffic. Pittman comes away the, to take it away. Pittman. Blocked that time, I believe Derek Spear may have gotten it. So CSU with a chance to run, Sessions in rhythm, buries it, and now there's a little life in here, and Ben Miller wants to talk things over. Big time shot there from the freshman. Gutsy shot, the transition three. RJ has never met a shot he didn't like, and nope. he's open the minute he walks in the gym. <laughs> Whether he is or not, in his mind, he's open and ready to shoot the minute the ball hits his hands, and that's what range. you'd like to have. He's in range at the very least. It's one of those situations where if you're Robert Moore, you have to find the delicate balance of telling him to rein it in a little bit and not discourage him from shooting. Well, like we talked about in the women's game, Jonathan Norton told the shooters, hey, we brought you here to shoot the ball. And uh, I think you have to do the same thing to R with RJ. It's, we brought you here to shoot the ball. We brought you here to score. Do your thing, and you know if you're going to go through cold streaks, but hey, that's comes with the territory. 
because you did bring him in for his ability, for his ability to put the ball in the basket, for his athleticism. So free him up to go do that and go be the kind of player he is. And so far he has. David Mitchell wrote a story on RJ for the Ledger Inquirer here in Columbus as the shot was missed and B.J. Battle has the rebound. And it was talking about going from the guy who was absolutely the man at Northside High School and was asked to do everything and could do everything for them to coming into a college program and maybe not being the man right off the bat. You're a freshman, you're still gonna contribute and play key minutes, but they're not dependent upon you to do everything. And so it's a bit of an adjustment process. But at the same time, once he makes that adjustment and he isn't dependent to do everything and he can focus on just a couple of a couple aspects of his game, uh, that's, that's going to help him be a better all-around player in the future. Because uh, he came from a strong high school program over at Northside and went to the state finals last year, uh, or at the very least the semifinals, um, and, and again was, was the guy on that team. Cobia with his first basket underneath makes it a seven point game. CSU missed opportunity though on the possession before, could have gotten it down to three, but Derek Spear missed both the free throws. Sessions, a heat check from straight on and it falls out. That's probably not a shot you want to take there. Contested three, falling away. Again though, you have to live with it sometimes yep. to get the good ones. Bradley. Exactly. Barely had it, and CSU has a run out. RJ Sessions, at that time, that's just a freshman mistake, and it may work out okay for CSU. He tried to throw that lob up uncontrolled and wildly at the rim, but BJ Battle in the right place at the right time. You like the idea there, just maybe the, the execution and maybe not in that particular situation. Foul on D'Angelo Kirkland is his second. So Shane Hayward with two, D'Angelo Kirkland with two. So both of the big guys in the middle for CSU and a little bit of foul trouble. So we'll monitor that as we hit the final media time out of the half. 3.39 to go. CSU in a familiar spot. Down by just five as we hit the final time out of the half. Stephen Williams, Jonathan Husky back here with you inside the Lumpkin Center. 29-24 CSU trailing by five with 3.39 to go. If you missed the opening game of the doubleheader, Columbus State Lady Cougars winning easily 78-55 over UNCP, improving to nine and three. Now the Cougars trying to follow suit. The foul was the seventh of the half on CSU, so Brandon Winford at the line for the one and one where he made the first. He's been good from the free throw line, five for five already for a guy that just shoots it at 66%. Had a phenomenal half so far for him, 12 points already with five rebounds. So back to a seven point margin. It's bounced around between five and nine for about the last 10 minutes of this one. They opened up a 10 point edge, but that closed quickly. Battle from the left side, he missed it. RJ Sessions tried to follow dunk. He'd prefer maybe to follow layup because he missed the dunk. They hand it off, Cobia to Winford, a basket and foul. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of instances there where you, you, you wanna Rain RJ in a little bit, that attempted lob there to uh, Jermaine Morgan a couple possessions ago, and then there, 
I mean, he was up above everybody. He would prefer him. To, he had to go up though with just one hand. Prefer him to control it instead of trying to dunk it. Winford adding to his great first half. Tax on the free throw. Give him 15 points now. He's by far the game leader, and it's back to a 10-point game. And with three minutes left, CSU needs to try to add some momentum here. 2-3 zone look from the Braves, and Ty Harris goes all by himself to the left for the lay-in. So the junior has three, makes it an eight-point game. Got to find a little pocket here of momentum to take into the locker room at halftime. Winford quickly double teamed underneath. It opens up things on the outside. Rose on the long two step back, missed the shot. CSU trying to push with it. Harris is gonna step into the lane, sets up Dimitri Davis who missed the open look. Good creation that time by Harris, just no finish. Rose, a clean look from three, missed it. And CSU again will push. Ty Harris wants to run every time he gets it. And this time they give it up. BJ Battle needed that one. Wide open and knocked it down. Good possession there. Good vision to see Battle open at the top of the key. Didn't rush it. Allowed himself to step into it and knock it down. And you like Kenny Funderburk. Passed up an okay shot. For a better one. For a better shot with BJ Battle. Kenny had a clean look but decided that BJ had a better one. Five point game now with a minute 40 to go. Pittman from the baseline knocks it down. You have to give UNCP credit. Every time CSU's gotten close, they've had an answer. Harris pushing the tempo that time. The pass was stolen away. Rose on the opposite Ooh. end, swatted away by BJ Battle. The only problem was huh. it went out of bounds. You could see him sizing that up from about mid court. We saw that play unfolding. Always a lot easier when you're the help defender. You're the second guy <laughs> yeah. to go up and get it. First guy's underneath him playing defense, and you can just go up and grab it. The 40-inch vertical doesn't hurt either. A minute 15 now. CSU needing a stop and a bucket to build a little momentum. Rose thought about it. They decide to work it outside. Bradley straight on, missed left. Dawson the rebound. CSU's done a nice job here in the last few minutes of getting on the glass, not allowing second opportunities. BJ will try left side this time, and there's another one. BJ battle. Back-to-back -back threes, and it's a four-point game. Big-time stretch to end this half here for the Cougars. If they can keep it four or five points going into the locker room, uh, they got to feel real good about where they are. And still only one point from Kenny Funderburg. So you have to figure at some point he may get going. It's about 14 seconds difference between the two clocks. 27 and ticking down left on the game clock. Shot clock at eight now. Pittman with it. Steps between the double team. And CSU called for the foul. And Robert Moore can't believe it. So that will bail out the Braves with single digit showing on the shot clock. It's the ninth foul against CSU, charged to Ty Harris, his first. So the one and one for Griffin Pittman with 18 and a half seconds left to go. UNC Pembroke, a perfect nine for nine from the free throw line in this one. CSU four for eight. First miss, and CSU has it saved in bounds and has the final possession should they choose. In a five-point game, they can make it one possession. Heading into the locker room with a score here. Seven seconds to go. CSU needs to go to work. Harris tries to get a screen, lost it. He's gonna have to fire. He'll fire the three at the horn. It doesn't go down. Not a good final possession for CSU. But it's a five-point game at half, a game in which they didn't really get anything going offensively. B.J. Battle finally gets shots to fall late. R.J. Sessions kept him in it for a while, and they're probably fortunate to be down just five. Well, again, I, I still say they got to feel real good about where they are being down just five going into the locker room now. Uh, with the way they shot the ball for the majority of that first half and, and the way that, especially the way that UNCP started the half, started the game, it looked like they were going to run away and hide, but... 
credit CSU for uh, getting back on the defensive end, bothering them enough, and then credit them also for uh, staying in the game enough to where, I mean, they're still in this game. They still got a shot. I think you got to feel real good about where they stand. Ten points for RJ Sessions, leads the way for CSU. Eight for BJ Battle, who hit the two big threes coming down the home stretch there in the first half. Four for Shane Hayward, but he picked up two fouls with 13 minutes to go and didn't play any more in the half. He played the first seven minutes, and that was it for him. Jermaine Morgan had two. D'Angelo Kirkland had four before he picked up a second foul. Ty Harris finished with three, and Kenny Funderburg, CSU's leading scorer, trying to get back into the groove of things after the shoulder injury, has just a lone free throw for the only score that he's put on the board this afternoon. On the opposite side, Brandon Winford, the man stealing the show right now for UNC Pembroke. 15 points and six rebounds, seven of seven from the free throw line. Six for Griffin Pittman, five for Quamaine Rose, the leading scorer for this team at 16 and a half for a game. He was two of 10 from the field, so CSU did a nice job against him defensively. Four for Ben Jacobs, who picked up two fouls. Three for Kasheen Hinton, and two apiece for Jihad Wright and Reggie Cobia. They go to the locker room at halftime, 37-32. UNC Pembroke in front. We'll take the break with them. We'll come back, look at the Peach Belt Conference standings on the men's side and see where CSU stands inside that Western Division. Your score at the break, 37-32. UNC Pembroke leads.
37-32, UNC Pembroke leads it at halftime here inside the Lumpkin Center. Stephen Williams and Jonathan Husky back court side with you as we get set for the second half of basketball. The Cougars 7-5 overall, 1-4 in conference play. Have lost three in a row, trying to avoid a fourth straight loss. CSU comes into this one in sixth place right now in the Peach Belt Conference's Western Division. That is not the place you need to be. You need to be in the top five. You really need to be in the top four, but with Young Harris still not able to make postseason play and them being as good as they have been recently, you really need to be in the top five to, to get into the Peach Belt Conference Tournament and CSU out of that mix right now. Remember, they missed it last year when they went 13-13 and last season, and Robert Moore had the team this year, has more talent this year than he had last year, but it's a team that's just struggled at different aspects of the game, and we watched them struggle in the first half, but down five, a chance here with the first possession to get it down to a one-possession game and really spark something right off the bat. And the start of the half is going to be key. you got to start out hot. you got to start making shots early to get some kind of momentum because that was the struggle at the beginning of the game was they, they couldn't get anything to fall. They were getting looks. They just couldn't get anything to fall, and uh, they put themselves in a hole. But if they can start out hot here in the second half, they're right back in the ballgame. CSU goes with its original starting five. Battle, Sessions, and Spear at the guards as BJ will tee one up from downtown and a big shot for BJ Battle, who's starting to heat up. That'll work. Hayward and Dimitri Davis, the other two on the floor as Winford flies in and goes bank for the basket. Brandon Winford continuing his good performance so far. Shane Hayward back on the floor after playing just seven minutes because of foul trouble in the first half. So he'll have to avoid a third here in this one. Derek Spear from downtown, and CSU lives and dies with a three, and they're living right now. Good start. It's exactly what you needed. It's a good start. Rose, who was hemmed up well in that first half. RJ Sessions did a whale of a job on him in half number one. He was two of ten from the floor. Rose comes back to get it with 15 on the shot clock. It's a one-point game, 39-38. It's the closest the Cougars have been in this ball game. Three from the corner, hits off the front side of the rim, and Rose can't tiptoe the baseline to save it in, so CSU has a chance now. A minute and 21 seconds into this half to get its first lead. UNC Pembroke going to add a little pressure into the backcourt. Maybe a lead will be something to kind of get this place alive a little bit. It's been dead. The women didn't exactly give them a ton to cheer about because they were on cruise control. BJ will try again off the backside and the rebound to Pittman. UNC Pembroke scored the first four points of this game. They've led ever since. Never trailed. Outside, Pittman will get another look, and again, he misses it short. Winford has it blocked, and then off his shoulder, out of bounds. So a nice job underneath by CSU. But at the same time, that's two straight possessions that UNC Pembroke has gotten uh, the offensive rebound and has turned it over. He would much rather just, just get, the, get the board if you're CSU. A second opportunity now to take the lead. Hayward pounding his way into the middle, goes up and under, and it rolled out. Did a nice job of using the rim to shield the defender, and the shot just spun out. Underneath, Jacobs had it knocked away. CSU pushing it. It's a two on two, and BJ Battle was out of control. A turnover, and then another turnover, and Clomaine Rose dribbles into a wide open three that he missed. The game's and, right there for the taking. And Spear traveled. Started to pass it. Pass wasn't there. Took a step before he put it on the floor. The game is right there for the taking for either of these teams. And, and I mean, really disjointed basketball these last few trips up and down the floor. That's four times now CSU has had possession of it in the last minute and 20 seconds with a chance to lead. They've turned it over twice and missed two shots. Closing in on the 17-minute mark, 
Both these sides trying to snap losing streaks in conference play. UNC Pembroke's lost two in a row. CSU's lost three in a row. Right to the rim, the high floater wasn't there. Rebound, loose on the floor, and RJ Sessions has it. Here's a fifth try for the lead. That time, B.J. Battle thought better of the three-point attempt. Spear picked up his dribble a long way from the rim, had to give it up. Shot clock at 15. Will this be the trip they finally get in front? B.J. Battle puts it on the floor to the rim, and an offensive foul coming up as there's four bodies sitting on the floor underneath the basket. Ben Jacobs stepped in the middle that time and drew the charge, and B.J. Battle gives it back to UNCP. Battle just had the look of, he just wanted to take that shot. He wanted to, he wanted to be the guy to take that shot on that possession and forced it. Uh, because, it, you know, again, you gotta, you got to give that up. you got to give it up if you gotta, don't have a good look and ended up with a turnover. So that's five empty trips for CSU. As it's dropped baseline for Pittman, he goes up, had the shot blocked. Ben Miller wanted a foul call as CSU just about gives it up again. Quamaine Rose tipped the pass away, but Demetri Davis ran it down. Here is a sixth trip. How many tries are you going to get at this before UNC Pembroke gets back on the scoreboard? You're tempting fate by not taking the lead when you have the opportunity to. CSU is trailed by as much as 10. Davis to the rim, and Dimitri Davis finally gives CSU the lead. Good possession there. Finally found a seam in a crease, forced his way to the rim, and got it to go. First points of the game for Dimitri Davis, and it's a 40-39 game. CSU in front for the first time. Underneath, Hayward steps in to take it away, and CSU then draws the foul on Hinton. So a good start to the half for the Cougars. They open the half on an 8-2 run. They lead for the first time, and we hit the first media timeout. So advantage CSU in the first pocket of this second half, and with timeout on the floor, CSU in front, 40-39, 15-20 to go. Cougar Sports TV, your home for Columbus State Athletics. Basketball doubleheader next Saturday at 1.30 and 3.30 here on this court as CSU will take on Armstrong. Then the following Monday, 1.30, 3.30 on Martin Luther King Day with Flagler in town. Kenny Funderburk to the rim, goes baseline, and Kenny has his first basket. If he can get going, that's big for the Cougars. It's now a three-point game with 15 minutes to go. The three from the wing wasn't there. Harris with the rebound, and he likes to push it. Kinney trying for a second in a row off the back rim. R.J. Sessions, though, kept it alive and drew the foul. So CSU now, for the first time really in this ball game, showing some life. The foul goes against Kasheen Hinton. It's his second. CSU in front by three. D'Angelo Kirkland in the game now at the same time as Shane Hayward as they go dual post. And a pass to no one by Thunderbird goes out of bounds. So empty possessions. The story of the half so far for CSU, but somehow they've done it on the defensive end to keep themselves in front. Well, and UNCP having trouble getting shots to drop as well. And 
CSU's been able to capitalize just enough to take the lead, but you know, still far from over. You gotta keep the pressure on and, and you wanna go on one of those runs that we talked about earlier. Go on one of those runs and, and try to cushion, build yourself some cushion. Rose got the offensive rebound and handed it off to Hinton, and Hinton puts an end to the run of CSU to cut it down to one. Funderburg to the rim, lost it on the way up, asking for a foul call, and it'll be CSU ball after the out of bounds. Funderburg wide open underneath off the inbounds, got a man in the air and didn't get a foul call, and Robert Moore just kind of laughing on the sideline. Jacobs makes the tough catch and got the shot up over Hayward, and then it gets hung. <laughs> got caught in that corner. So Pembroke will have a chance to still regain the lead now with six minutes gone by in the second half, trailing for the first time in this ball game. Led up until the 15-30 mark in this half. Hinton into the lane and traveled. One too many steps in the lane and he gives it up. Jermaine Morgan will come in in place of Shane Hayward. RJ Sessions hasn't had anything go down for him here in the second half. Had 10 points and kept CSU alive early in that first. Funderburk missed. Kirkland, though, bullying his way to the rim after he grabbed the rebound while head to the free throw line. You can tell Kenny's just not quite right. That shoulder still bothering him just a little bit because that's usually a shot he'll knock down or at the very least he'll get to the rim a little bit better. And you wonder how much different this game would be if he's at 100%. That is a big pad on that left shoulder. Yeah, uh-huh. He's got a one of those foam-like pads on his left shoulder with a lot of tape heavily on top of it. And D'Angelo Kirkland heads to the free throw line. The foul was on Ben Jacobs, that's his third, so he's battled foul trouble all game long, but Ben Miller's gonna leave him out there with three fouls. Three-point game again. This is as wide as the margin has been in CSU's favor. Rose for the tie, has it from the corner. He's been quiet tonight, but that three ties the game up. Tied at 44 as the arena goes quiet. Funderburg for three, answers on the other end. Big time shot there. You can tell though, he's being more aggressive, more assertive. He wants to be a bigger part of this game. It's just a matter of if his shoulder will let him. The pass deflected by Kirkland. Funderburg goes to get it and then he's fouled by Hinton in transition. D'Angelo Kirkland's done a nice job tonight. His hand has been on five or six passes that they've tried to put on the interior. Hinton picks up the foul, that's his third. So he'll sit down and Griffin Pittman will come back to the floor. All the way underneath, Jermaine Morgan gets the easy lay in and CSU finally has a little rhythm to the offense. And RJ Sessions calling for the foul from behind. That's a a, a tough foul. That's a tough foul to get called in that situation. That spot on the floor especially. Kenny Funderburg was 0 for 2 from the floor in the first half. He's already taken six shots in this second half. I don't know if Robert Moore said something to him at halftime or what the message was as Rose hits his second straight from downtown. But Funderburg much more aggressive in this half. Harris creates for Morgan again who can't finish but he'll head to the free throw line. I like what Ty Harris has done. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's, done, he's done I think what you have to do, forcing the Forcing the issue, pushing, pushing the tempo a little bit uh, to get the ball up the floor. And as you said, finally, I mean, for, really first time all game, some rhythm to the offense for CSU these last few possessions. It's almost like they look like they know what they're doing now. Whether yeah. they do is right. still up in the air, but they look <laughs> like it. 
And looking good to have the battle, right? Foul is on Pittman, that's his second. Jermaine Morgan, the one at the free throw line. CSU has not been particularly strong from the line today. They're four for nine now. Pittman getting looked at by the training staff on the end of the UNCP bench, looking at that left knee. May have banged it on somebody else's as Morgan splits the pair and now CSU goes into the full court press. Bradley hemmed up in the corner, has to take a timeout and that'll get them up off their feet at the CSU bench. Got stuck in that coffin corner over there and had nowhere to go, especially at 5'7", couldn't see around him. I like the move from Robert Moore though to go to the full court press to try to create some more possessions, create some turnovers and get UNCP out of their rhythm. Uh, could be uh, exactly what, what CSU needs right now to keep this lead and build it up a little bit. Well, sometimes when there is no flow, you have to force the action to try to create some, and he's got a bunch of guards and guys that love to get out and run, and sometimes the best thing you can do is speed them up and just say, let's go. Yeah, CSU has, I think, some of the best athletes uh, you know, in, in the conference, I think on the floor uh, uh, today especially. You know, again, the, the thing we've talked about they're missing is that size, but play to your strengths. Realize what you have and that in you have guys that are fast, that are athletic, that are quick, and let them go, go be that. And I think doing the full court press, going into that, going to the trap, uh, will help that, help that very much. In the preseason, Robert Moore said, you know, I've got more depth than I've ever had as a head coach. I've got 14 guys, a lot of interchangeable parts, a lot of guys that are about the same talent level. So on any night, I can plug and play a lot of different guys. And he said that this is going to be a team we're going to press and press and press and press. And he really hasn't done that much this season, except for in spots. And it may be something that they have to think about doing more in the long term going forward. Yeah, I would think so, because it, it's just like you said. I remember talking to him before the season. He told me that same thing. Uh, you you got to play to your strengths, and uh, that's, what, that's what CSU is. They're an athletic, quick team that can really harass ball carriers, ball handlers, rather, in the backcourt. Like Jermaine Morgan was doing, and they earned the 10-second violation. So they've had the press on for two possessions, forced a timeout, and forced a turnover. So right away, you watch Jermaine Morgan hounding the ball handler that time. It was the big guy, Winford, in the backcourt that was trying to bring it up the floor, maybe not what you wanted to have, but Jermaine Morgan did a nice job, and maybe you're seeing a recipe for what this should look like the rest of the game. Yeah, credit, credit CSU for recognizing that that, was, they didn't, that wasn't your best ball handler with the ball back there for UNCP, but not letting the big guy get rid of it, forcing him to try to get it across the floor, and he obviously wasn't able to. Ben Miller over there in the UNCP huddle, furiously drawing something up on his board. I would imagine it's a press break. So we'll see if Robert Moore chooses to keep it on. It may be one of those things. Jonathan Norton will do it every once in a while where he'll throw the press at you until you get that first time out, and then he's going to take it away because he knows you just went and prepared for it, and he's going to give you a different look, and then it'll come back again later, hopefully after you've kind of forgotten yeah. what you were told on the press break. Yeah, it doesn't give you enough time to really get used to it because once you get used to it and you're expecting it, it kind of loses its effectiveness, which is, I think, maybe why Robert Moore hasn't, employed it as much as he either said he would or, or maybe expected to at the beginning of the season, realizing that it's better suited in kind of short bursts as more, as, as, rather than you know an entire game-long strategy. Well, it's worked out like a charm for them on back-to-back -back possessions, and now they have a chance to add on to a three-point lead. D'Angelo Kirkland had good position. The pass was a little too wide for him, and he couldn't get corral it. They're still going to press. And so they will stay with it. That time, though, they just pass right past it. As I don't think CSU really got fully set in it. Well, Main Rose just got out in front of RJ Sessions, and the pass was very, very easy on the inbound. Sessions, the one that's drawn the duty of guarding Quamain Rose. They switch now. Ty Harris is on him. But Harris trying to hawk him from one side of the court to the other. Shot clock at 10, Wright gives it up to Bradley. Working on the right wing, Jacob sets the screen. Sessions got through it. Bradley had the defender fly by him and missed the shot short, but Jacobs kept it alive. Underneath, over the top of Ty Harris, another second chance basket. Great move by Jacobs there to use the jump stop and avoid the offensive foul. RJ from just across midcourt almost. Too strong, and that's one of those, again, probably not 
the shot you were looking for. No, it didn't have your rebounders there underneath. That was a wasted possession. Pretty much just like a turnover for CSU. Took about four seconds and was about three steps beyond the three-point line. The three from the corner is good for Rose, who has found his rhythm from beyond the arc. And UNCP back in front. RJ to the rim, the up and Ooh. under, and it gets hung again. Huh. We'll go games without seeing that. <laughs> We've seen it twice here in about five minutes. Great move, though, from RJ there to get to that point. Showing flashes of what he is and what he can be. Imagine him two, two, two three years from now. If he can develop the game where he's not just the outside shooter, the possibilities for what he can become are endless. BJ Battle from inside the arc knocks it down. BJ has shot the basketball well. He's 5 of 11 from the floor. He's knocked down three from outside. And now CSU will settle into a 2 3 look. Harris and Funderburk up top. Hayward manning the middle. So continuing to change looks. Trying to take the interior away. Rose, someone find him outside. He's wide open and knocking him down. Makes it a three-point game in UNCP's favor. B.J. Battle wide open on the perimeter. Begging for the ball. Shane Hayward didn't see him. Hayward banging his way inside. CSU finally with the putback. Jermaine Morgan showing his muscle. Need to get a stop here from CSU because now with, with UNCP with the lead and kind of off schedule and that they have a one-point lead instead of a two-point lead, you're forced to keep up with them now. You, anytime they go on to a run, you're going to find yourself down four or five points before you know what hits you. Morgan called for the blocking foul, and he's going to have to be careful. He was not happy with that call, and the official gave him an extra long look while he was laying on the floor. Official did a nice job, though, of swallowing the whistle, letting the guy emotionally react. It's Griffin Pittman that's at the line to shoot the two. They made their first nine from the foul line. They missed their last two now. For Jermaine, that was foul number three. Harris, coast to coast, missed wow. it. Jermaine Morgan flying in for the follow. So Jermaine Morgan with back-to-back -back baskets off offensive rebounds. Both sides with 10 second chance points now. Bradley got past Harris and then his foot slid on the ground, a traveling call, and CSU gets it back with a one point lead. 56-55, this has been a much better offensive half for CSU, and if they could just fix the turnovers, it'd be a completely different story. A little more energy this half, a little more kind of swagger almost. Funderburk from the left wing, missed it short. Backside rebound for Rose. And you can see Rose just sizing it up as he dribbles down the floor. Step back. Wow. Front rim, Funderburk the rebound. That was a heat check of sorts for Rose. Battle, one of the three, missed it. So both sides exchanging empty possessions in a one point game. Pittman, over the top of Hayward, seesaws UNCP back in front. Pittman with eight. And neither team shooting the ball real well, both at 40, right around 40, 42 percent. Can you imagine with the number of shots taken, where, where would we be score-wise if they were shooting close to their season average? Morgan all the way to the rim. Shane Hayward deserves some credit huh. there. He just boxed out the defender and Jermaine having a strong second half. Rose, the floater. Didn't get it to go down, and Hayward has the rebound. A nifty move, just didn't go down, and outside Harris lost the ball for a moment. Funderburk tried to force it that time. Going for Morgan, turned it over. Again, though, a game that's hanging in the balance. It's gonna be up to whichever side and take advantage here. 
Opportunities aplenty for both sides. Jacobs with it. The hook wasn't there over Hayward. Morgan grabbed another rebound. That's his sixth to go along with 11 points. Still a quiet atmosphere in here today. Uncharacteristically quiet. Battle, left corner, bury the three. And Robert Moore wants to take a timeout to set them some things up. B.J. Battle has hit some big shots in this game when CSU needed him. He helped him get back in it late in the first half. He hit a big one to start the second half. And that one right there adds just a little separation. Well, I mean, the three-pointer is huge there to make it a two-possession game at 61-57. Even a two would have been nice on that possession to, uh, to make it a three-point game, but to make it four, uh, that's big for the Cougars. Get a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of a cushion, but the, the thing is you can't relax on the defensive end on this possession. Like you, you could get a stop and get points the next time down, then you're really in business. Cormain Rose has been the guy you've had to find in this second half for UNC Pembroke. Brandon Winford who had such a good first half has been nowhere to be found in the second half. I need to go back and look through the box scores and see how much he's played in this half because I don't remember him being on the floor very much after he had 15 points and six rebounds in the first half. Winford at the last media timeout had only played eight minutes. He's on the floor now, inbounding the basketball as CSU out of the timeout goes back to the press. Bradley was able to break it all by himself. D'Angelo Kirkland trying to track him down, a foot taller than him. And Kenny Funderburk calling for the foul, 30 feet from the basket. Second on Funderburk. Fourth in the half against CSU, neither team to the bonus just yet, and with 6.23 to go, we have immediate timeout on the floor. 61-57, CSU in front by four. Sixty-one fifty-seven, four-point game. Six twenty-three to go here inside the Lumpkin Center on Cougar Sports TV. Two teams desperate for Peach Belt Conference victories as D'Angelo Kirkland hit with a foul away from the ball, trying to guard Winford. Both of these teams, though, looking to get back into the win column in conference play. UNT Pembroke back-to-back -back losses to Georgia Regents and Georgia Southwestern. CSU with three losses in a row. Lander, USC Aiken, and Francis Marion. Four-point lead for CSU is the largest of the day as that pass got through Winford. And again, it was D'Angelo Kirkland, though, that was there to break the pass up. UNCP kind of having trouble hanging on to the basketball now. And CSU has been able to take advantage. See if it continues on this possession. Hayward underneath with the left hand, a nice up and under move around Kobe and it's a six point game. Foul coming up again under the basket away from the ball. This time it's on Shane Hayward. That's his third.
I'll be honest, the way this one started, the way CSU played out of the gates, did not see them being up six with five and a half minutes to go in the second half. Would not have put money on that one. No, but credit them and credit Robert Moore for uh, getting them situated, kind of, realizing what kind of game it was going to be and adjusting the way he, he coached and the way his team played. And this is a very good UNC Pembroke basketball team. But CSU is going to have to try to close out. Winford underneath, got the position, got the basket, and cuts it down to four. Ty Harris running the point for CSU now. A 2-3 zone look from UNCP. Kirkland lurking outside to set the screen. They swing it around the perimeter. Funderburk to the rim, the finger roll is good. There's no defense for that. There's no way to defend that shot. And, if, and when Kenny's right, if he can make that shot, that's why he's a difference maker on the floor. Pittman to the rim, matches it with a layup of his own. Griffin Pittman into double figures. Funderburk with a better pass, probably takes the shot there because he was open with the pass, didn't set him up. Kenny passes down low this time to Shane Hayward, who's double teamed. Now Funderburk will finally shoot it. The three-point range hasn't been there for Kenny. He's hit just one in this one so far. One for four from downtown. Four-point game, four minutes to go. Bradley runs around two defenders, sets up Pittman, who has his three rattle out. And on a run out, B.J. Battle goes to the rim and the <laughs> up and under. <laughs> Oh. Battle hung in the air as the defender closed in on him, went up under the rim, and with the reverse laid it in. Jacobs misses, Hayward rebound, foul UNCP, and CSU with a little momentum here with 3.34 to go. Looked like BJ wanted to dunk that ball, but defender closed in faster than he expected, and you, you, you can't teach that kind of athleticism to be able to adjust in midair like that and under the rim and get the reverse layup to go. You can't coach height, you can't coach athleticism. They're nope. gifts that you're given. Some guys have them, some guys don't. Probably like us. Some guys, you, yeah. you have the height. I, don't, I do have the height. I don't think we have the athleticism. No, that's why we're here talking about it instead right. of out there, yeah. I still have eligibility left. And so do I. I don't think they want it. No. <laughs> they're saying keep it, <laughs> keep it. That's fine. They're not offering me a jersey. No, uh, no, no, I don't know. CSU though, trailed in this one the whole way in the first half. They fell behind by 10. It was actually, what, a minute and one second into the game when Robert mm -hmm. Moore took his first time out. He saw things not going his way. UNCP had gotten the first four points of the game. They were getting run outs, turnovers. CSU wasn't getting anything going. They fell behind 10 at 27-17. And then they started to claw their way back in. It was RJ Sessions that kept them going for a while. Who, by the way, still has not scored in the second half. He has 10 points huh. all in the first half. And he hasn't played a whole lot here in the last few minutes. BJ Battle hit some big shots down the stretch. And it really was the defensive end that kept him in that ball game because UNC Pembroke could have ran away with it. Yeah, and, and I think that tells you the potential that the CSU team has, the fact that RJ hasn't scored in the second half, uh, and they're still, they're up by six with three and a half to go. They don't they don't need him, they don't need any one guy. There's enough scores and enough talent on the team that, that they can win if one guy has an off night. This is the five Robert Moore's been sticking with here for the last few minutes. Funderburk and Battle, the wing players. Ty Harris, the point guard, and he goes with a dual post of Hayward and Kirkland, he can do that down the stretch because he doesn't need to be subbing them one for each other because the game's almost over. Hayward with the hook, missed it. Had a good look at it and missed it and D'Angelo Kirkland called for the rebounding foul. You love Shane Hayward's moves in the post, just sometimes they just don't go down. He's so long that just about any shot around the paint is possible. And if he can get more consistent with actually scoring the basketball, look out. I mean, he's a he's a guy that, that's tough to defend because of that length. And uh, that's something that's just going to come with time, come with, with time playing at the college level and kind of learning how to rein himself in a little bit. Ben Jacobs at the line for the one and one. Front end, a big one with 3.06 to go as Jacobs knocks it through. 
Jermaine Morgan will come in in favor of D'Angelo Kirkland, who just picked up his fourth foul. I would imagine D'Angelo will be back shortly. Jacobs knocks them down both, and UNC Pembroke will apply some pressure in the backcourt. They haven't gone to a full court press. They've been more just pressure on the inbounds and on the ball, and that's it. Hasn't been a team effort. It's been just a one guy thing. Under three to go. Can CSU close it out? Trying to turn the tides a little bit. Harris to the rim. The shot didn't go, and it's an offensive foul on Ty Harris. So many times this season, CSU has had a 10 point or more lead and lost it. Today, they're trying to do the opposite. I believe Ben Jacobs may be bleeding somewhere around his chin. He's walking over the bench, keeps touching his chin area. It's hard to tell because it's covered in a beard. <laughs> <laughs> but he is going to be tended to over there. They're going to towel off. I like how the trainer has to pull the beard out of the way to get to the cut. <laughs> It's a good that's way to hide it, though. That's a good way to hide it. It's just it's things you don't think about. As long as, you know, the blood's not dripping out, it's a good way to cover up where a cut might be. Yeah, yeah. But obviously that's not the case right now. They're going to have to tend to him and stop that before he can be back out on the floor. I believe if it takes too long, he won't be able to be out there. But Ben Miller says, no, 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 come on. We need huh. you. Get back out there. You're good. Referee checked on him, approved. So with 2.46 to go, it's a four-point game. Basketball belongs in the hands of UNC Pembroke. Trying to get back in it. They trail by four after leading for the first 25 minutes. Look at Rose somehow get that ball near the rim and B.J. Battle hit with the foul. A lot of touch fouls kind of being called. That's a, that's a physical drive, but I didn't see anything egregious that led to a foul call. Fans that are sitting behind us have not been very pleased with much of what's been called. But it's Quamaine Rose at the line for two. Pembroke has been very good from the line. They're 80% now, 12 of 15. As a team, they're 70% for the year. Rose has had himself a good second half. He had just five points in the first half. He now has 14 in the second. And now they start pounding the floor on the UNC Pembroke bench. They're within two. Momentum in their favor. CSU needs a basket to stop it. They don't, they turn it over, and Rose is gonna tie the game up. 67 all. I think we're in for a wild last 215 here. Rose now with 21, 67 all, 2.10 to go. Funderburk on the step through, too strong. Winford the rebound, and now we've got a jump ball coming up. The possession arrow favors UNC Pembroke, but the Pembroke bench got off of it thinking they had a foul call. And on one of the more physical plays of the night, no whistle. No, uh-uh. Two minutes left to go here in the Lumpkin Center. CSU has led by as much as six. UNC Pembroke by as much as 10. They're even at 67 right now. Pittman drives into the LaPaint. Ooh. Hayward says not in his house, and Funderburk runs it down. That was just easy. Not so a lot long. of effort. Now can they get a basket? It's been a while since they put one on the board. Jermaine to the rim, missed the shot. The rebound bounced around, and it's last touched by Pembroke with 1.22 to go. Fresh 35. I think Jermaine Morgan is gonna have a big say in this last minute and 22. He had that stretch earlier in the half where he got CSU kind of going. I think his athleticism and versatility is gonna be big here in this last uh, uh, little bit of the game. A minute 15 and counting. Ty Harris with it up top. Morgan came out to set a screen. They dump it underneath. Look at Harris create for Shane Hayward. Brilliant play there. Get the defense going one way, pass back against the grain to the backside. 
one minute to go. Two point game, CSU in front. Jermaine Morgan all up in the face of Ben Jacobs defensively. And a timeout coming up by Ben Miller on the UNC Pembroke bench. Jermaine Morgan was in Jacobs' face, hollering at him, yelling <laughs> at him, saying, come on, let's go. 50.4 seconds left on the clock. There'll be 19 on the shot clock coming up on the possession for UNC Pembroke. And it's not necessarily your biggest concern isn't the first shot. It's sometimes the second shot for UNC Pembroke at this point. And I think if you're... If you're Robert Moore, you're telling your guys to defend hard, obviously don't foul, but crash the boards. Just to, like you said, you don't want to give up another a second look or create a second possession. Crash the boards on the shot and uh, get out of there. If they miss the shot, get the rebound and get out of there. No need for anyone to leak out at this moment from right. the guard spot. All five of you hit the glass and we'll take our chances. Now here's the thing working in UNCP's favor, should they not score, they're gonna have three opportunities to put CSU on the line for the one and one if it comes down to that. Now they can make the shot and then it doesn't matter, it's right. a moot point. But if they don't and they choose to foul, you're gonna send a CSU team that's not a good free throw shooting team to the line for one and ones. You have three opportunities to do so. First things first though, UNC Pembroke can try to tie or lead on this possession. 19 on the shot clock, 50 on the game clock. Rose, you know the ball's gonna be in his hands. He's guarded by Battle. Shot clock to 12. They drop it to Jacobs, being guarded by Hayward. Double team. Hayward oh, blocked it again time. and grabbed the ball. Now he's gotta find somebody to get it to. Two second differential, they've got a foul and Jacobs finally will foul Ty Harris. Shane Hayward has twice now in the final minute and 30 seconds come up with a huge block. And now it comes down to like what you were just talking about, make free throws. Ty, Hit your free throws. 71% from the line this season, 10 for 14, 32.6 seconds left. Ty able to make the first. This next one's big, making a two possession game. Ty has gotten all the minutes down the stretch at the point guard spot for CSU. And he made them both, stepped to the line and knocked them both down and Robert Moore going to take a timeout. 71-67, 32.6 seconds to go and you have to believe the ball's in the hands of Rose and it's up to him to decide two or three because there's still a ton of time left. Yeah, and you, you just, you don't want to foul if you're CSU. That's the thing I have to keep coming back to is you don't want to put them on the line and let them score points with the clock stopped. Uh, they've shot the, the, the ball lot well from the free throw line. Seven of seven is UNCP so far tonight. Uh, so you don't want to foul, but you want to defend hard. It is a two possession game, so even if they make a three, you've you're still got the lead and you will get the ball back. And uh, so again, don't put them on the line. And on the other side, make your free throws. Make your free throws. They're called free for a reason. 32.6 seconds to go. Pembroke basketball, CSU to apply some pressure in the backcourt. Rose has it on the run across midcourt. Thought about a three and gave it up. Pittman will try one over Jermaine wow. Morgan and Stone Cold knocks it right through. Jermaine Morgan is six foot four and has really long arms and a high vertical and it didn't matter. Pittman shot it over top of him and now regardless of what happens on this possession, UNC Pembroke should get the ball back with a chance to tie. At the very least, a chance to tie. Uh, just an incredible shot from the corner there. That's when you just gotta tip your hat if you're CSU because there's nothing, there's nothing more you can do if you're Jermaine Morgan or anyone on the defensive end. But again, here you gotta expect, what you'll probably expect UNCP to do with 24 seconds and change left, they'll defend hard for a pass or two into the possession, try to force a turnover. If they can't, then they'll go to the foul. So be solid with the ball, smart passes, and then if you get sent to the line, hit your free throws. Two-step process, you gotta get it in, then you gotta make free throws. RJ Sessions into the game for free throw shooting purposes, tiptoeing that sideline and 
UNC Pembroke thought they had forced the turnover, but the foul was called on the bump prior to, I guess, him stepping out. Hard from this angle to tell if he stepped out or not. But now you're going to have the freshman who hasn't done anything in this second half to step to the line in a big-time ball game that you got to have and shoot the front end of a one-and-one. RJ, 74%. Calm, cool, and collected. Knocks down the first. And he was immediately the first look on that inbounds pass, freshman or not. That's who they wanted to get the ball to. And he wanted it. He mm -hmm. went out. Exactly. One more to make it a full one possession game. RJ doesn't do so. With 22 seconds to go, it's a two point game. Pembroke with the basketball and they'll take a timeout. 18.6 left now, 72-70. UNC Pembroke, a chance to tie or take the lead on this one. And last time, they used Rose more on the ball to create for somebody else, and it resulted in the three. We'll see which way they go now. I would imagine, if, if you're Pembroke here, that uh, you're, you're gonna take the last shot of the ball game on this possession. You're not going to give CSU, if you make the shot, you're not going to give CSU a chance to go back and win it and give them the last shot. I think you're going to take the last shot, and whether that's a two or three probably depends on, well, the look you get, who you got on the floor, and, uh, you know, things like that. But if you're CSU here, guard hard, defend hard, try to force a turnover, don't foul, obviously, and don't overcommit. You can't leave anybody open. Stay in your assignment and stay in your lane defensively. Pittman will inbound, 18.6 to go, 72-70, CSU by two. Sessions guarding the inbounder, they get it into Jihad Wright. Back to Pittman, down to 14. Working against Sessions, all the way to the rim goes Pittman, the layup is up and tied at 72, 10.1 to go. CSU with the final shot here for the win. Ty Harris into the front court. Dribbles into the lane, drops it off for Hayward, down to two. Hayward for the win! Oh, down! Seven tenths of a second to go. Seven tenths of a second to go, and CSU just got hit with a technical for a guy leaving the bench. No. <laughs> Kenny Funderburg jumped off the bench to go celebrate, thinking the game was over and won. Oh, no. And CSU is going to get hit with six men on the floor. So a stunned no. Lumpkin Center crowd with seven tenths of a second. Shane Hayward hit the shot to put them ahead, and now Griffin Pittman has two shots with seven tenths left to tie it. He needs both. And Pittman knocks down the first. And they'll have the ball. Pittman's two for five from the free throw line today now. This one for the tie. <laughs> Got him both. Wow. And now they will inbound from the other end of the floor in a tie ball game. They'll have seven tenths, so it's just going to be a heave at the horn. But on the way that that last possession went for CSU, would you count anything out right now? Timeout, CSU, and when it rains, it pours. Have you ever seen anything like that? I don't know if I've ever seen this. I saw him come off the bench. And he ran out there, and it took me a second to track back in my head whether he was actually on the court to start with. And right. Because if he is, then that's okay. Yeah. Because he just came sprinting over from the right side, but then you count the number of guys on the floor, and, I mean, and there were six, and that's a problem. And, well, it's against the rules. Right. See, yeah. And, and you, I mean, you feel so bad for, for, for Kenny because that's not – I mean, you can't fault him for that almost. It's, it's – you see, with the, the, as long as that ball hung on the rim before it dropped through, I mean, my, my initial thought was the game was over. I didn't think there was any way there was time left on the clock. I can't, I mean, you can't fault him, but you know, you know he feels terrible. He immediately 
ran back to the, he was out there a good while before they stopped him. <laughs> and then Robert Moore yelled, Kenny, and he sprinted back and sat down. And that was, I think, what drew the eye of the official. And he was like, yeah. whoa, hey, wait, wait a, a second. Yeah. That's six technical foul. Goodness gracious. Seven tenths, 74 all. We're headed to overtime unless Pembroke can get a basket here. The pass is stolen and we'll play five more minutes inside this building. You said you thought we'd have a wild ending, I, I, but I don't think we thought that was it. I said wild last 2.15. Apparently, I mean, I was correct. Down to that a, a full 2.15. So now CSU will take it to overtime, where they will try their hands to end a three-game losing streak. CSU had some impressive numbers in overtime. And I'll pull out the note on where it was. Last year, they lost in overtime 101 or 111, rather, 107 at Young Harris late in the year. And that snapped a 14 game winning streak CSU had in overtimes. Huh. A date crossing over several years. And I know that Josh Fuller was proud of that stat that he had looked up <laughs> when he wrote that in the notes. And he was devastated the night they lost because that was his favorite stat, a good stat. about his men's program because it dated back. It went a long way back. Oh, sure, 14, yeah. 14 overtime wins. They have one overtime win this season. That was on this floor against West Georgia earlier this season. That one coming back on November 30th. B.J. Battle hit a big three with about 18 seconds to go that tied the game. And CSU went into overtime and won that one 83-78. So they're on a one-game winning streak so, in hey, overtime. There's that. I guess you can't call it a streak. They'll try to make it a streak with this one. Well, the key here is, is if you're CSU, you can't be demoralized. You can't. You got to put the way the regulation ended behind you and play hard this next five minutes. Play this next five minutes like you played the last five minutes of regulation. Hayward and Jihad Wright will jump at center. Five minutes added to the clock for overtime. That ball is going to end up almost in our laps on the tip, but CSU will have the opening possession. Have to continue playing the way you did in the second half to take the lead. And interestingly enough, RJ Sessions out there to start this one, not Kenny Funderburk. And RJ didn't play much of that second half, especially late. Sessions, though, getting the start here for this overtime. Harris lost it. Had it taken away from him by right in the lane. You think about what could have been for CSU so far in this one. Not only did they have the game-winning layup made before the technical foul, but if you want to go further back than that, as Bradley tries for the three in the lead and misses Morgan with the rebound, remember R.J. Sessions missed a free throw that would have made it a three-point game yep. and would have forced Pembroke to make a three. But it's all what-ifs right now, and those don't matter. We're in overtime, a minute gone by, no score. 74 apiece. Way to CSU go to get points. BJ Battle is the team leader with 18. He'll try one. The three off to the left. The long rebound run down. Saved in by Jermaine Morgan wow. off of Jihad Wright. What a play. You can see that Wright was just kind of waiting and trying to box Morgan out and letting that ball go out of bounds. Morgan got around it. So I always say if you can, possess the basketball. Don't leave it in the hands of the officials. Overtime is about making hustle plays. They will separate teams in a game like this. RJ Sessions wanting the basketball and Jermaine Morgan's looking the other way. Hayward spins around right and goes through the rim. Shane Hayward has been strong down the stretch. Great footwork there to get moving towards the basket. And with Winford not on the floor to guard him, he, they've had no answer for him. Rose missed the three. Hayward the rebound. Shane with 12 points and four rebounds now. Two point edge. CSU led by as much as six. Into the corner, Sessions gets the shot he wanted and oh. he missed it. It rolled all the way around and out and a foul coming up against CSU and that won't please the locals. No, that's a tough call. Ty oh. Harris picks up the foul, his third. That's a tough call for both uh, for either team. A lot of contact both ways on that play. So double bonus for UNC Pembroke. Quamaine Rose will be the one at the line. CSU still not in the double bonus for itself. And 
as Rose goes to the line to try to tie this game at 76. Can't do so though. A reliable free throw shooter at 78% has finally missed. And now UNC Pembroke will put Reggie Cobia in the game. And I would imagine the sole purpose of that is to guard Shane Hayward. Rose with 21 points. Make it 22, he's five of six now from the line. It's a one point game. 76, 75, under three minutes to go now. And Cobia comes into the game and then commits the foul underneath. And if you look at the stats, it may not have been the worst foul because now you're gonna send Shane Hayward, who is a 55% free throw shooter to the line and you have to remember this is a one and one. Big, big front end. Shane though, calmly knocks Knocking it, it down. down. Knocking it down like he knows what he's doing. That will tie Shane's season high and his high in a Cougar uniform at 13. This one would set a new one and make it a three point game. The lefty knocks them both through. 14 for Hayward, three point game. 2.47 to go. Bradley in amongst the trees, the hesitation, the floater got it up and over Jermaine Morgan. I think even if Morgan had gotten a finger on that, that would have been goaltending. Those were Alex Bradley's first two points of the game and he just wow. about got a steal. <laughs> Harris with the three point attempt, he missed the shot. BJ Battle got the offensive rebound. And on the floor, CSU got the timeout call. So 2.21 to go, 78-77, CSU in front by one. How about the handle from Ty Harris there, the top of the key? Such a low dribble too, uh -huh. it wasn't just a crossover, it was about six inches off the uh -huh. ground. Bradley is so fast and he can get right up inside of you. And he was ready to take that one and take off the other direction. He, he got going the other direction, just didn't have the ball. It's kind of important. <laughs> you kind of need that. It's a key aspect of that whole equation. You don't want to look ahead because <laughs> it's a one-point game with 2.21 to go. But you think about what a victory here could do for CSU. All of the bad things that have not been going their way, even down to the way regulation ended here. Yeah all the things that have gone against them in the last month or so, and you could get a victory over a very good UNC Pembroke team in overtime when you really didn't have anywhere near your best stuff today. Well, conversely though, I mean, how tough would a loss be? After the way you had After it After the way it ended, yeah, exactly. Four game losing streak with a tough stretch coming up on the horizon at the very least in the schedule. I mean, there's a lot riding on this game. Robert Moore hoping he doesn't have to answer those questions after the game. <laughs> hoping that we can talk about a victory. His team's got to hold on for two minutes and 21 more seconds. They lead by just one. Battle, the fall away, too strong. Look at Hayward, Hayward. go get it though. <laughs> Pass that time going for RJ Sessions. Pittman gambled on it committed the foul and that's the 10th foul now. So it's RJ Sessions to the line for two. The freshman wants the ball in big situations so here you are son. <laughs> 206 in overtime, up one, see what you got. You could have heard a pin drop from the upper deck over across the way yep. with how quiet it was on that free throw just then. This would make it a three point game again. Again, deathly quiet in this building and Sessions knocks them both down, give him 13, three point game, two minutes to go. Look at Rose with the nifty spin move. And then BJ Battle blocked it and took it away. 
And then the veteran move not to outlet it, yep. but to hold on to it. Don't make the dangerous pass that's not needed. Kill a little clock here. Three point game, 145 to go. BJ battle with it, off to Ty Harris who has played all of the minutes in overtime and most of them in the second half at the point guard spot. Shot clock at 10 with a minute 30 to go. CSU will go to work now, Harris gets a screen. Started to drive around Jacobs, they'll wipe the layup off the board. By that time they switched and he was just too fast and burnt right past Jacobs. And now, nearly 44 minutes into this game, our first player has fouled out. Ben Jacobs will head to the bench with five fouls. He played, put in eight points. And Ben Miller hasn't made a whole lot of subs late in the half and in overtime. So we'll see where he goes to his bench to put someone in. Winford, by the way, the reason he's not playing is he's sitting over there with no shoe on. Kind of need two shoes to play, and he's got the left one off and something wrapped around his foot. Yeah, they've been working on his ankle and a little bit up in the knee, but a lot in the foot and the ankle over there this entire second half, really. That's a shame because he was having such a good game. He had 15.6 mm -hmm. rebounds in the first half. Ty Harris at the line. He'll have two shots to make it a two-possession game. <laughs> Hangs on the rim, and those are the kind of rolls you're supposed to get in your home building. It was following that one in from the line. Six for Harris. Second one looks a lot better. Five point game, 82-77. CSU trying to snap the three game losing streak. Right, tough move over Morgan off the glass. Jihad Wright now with four. Three point game again, one minute left in overtime. Does CSU have enough left in the tank? Harris comes to get it, being guarded by Bradley. Cougars in no hurry to try to take a shot in this possession. Shot clock at 13. Hayward a little bit away from the basket, backing Cobia in, using the body, wow. left hand, and the foul. Wow, Hayward great move. Hayward using the body to create space, and then he seems to cut the distance between him and the basket in half with his arms. That's just, it's just such a veteran move to use the shoulder and then even use the right arm, get a little bit of a push off there to create some separation, and then get the left-handed hook to go. Makes it a five-point game, 42 seconds to go. A chance to make it six at the line, and he does. Shane Hayward with a season-high 17. Six-point game. Don't foul here if you're CSU. They need a basket quick, and CSU gets the turnover. Harris the steal, and we may be watching it wrap up now with 32.3 seconds to go. Ty Harris got the steal off the deflection, and he's headed to the line to shoot two with 32 seconds to go with a six-point lead. Looks like a completely different team out there for CSU here in the second half of the second half, if that makes sense, and in overtime here. Just not even on the floor, just the, the intangibles aspect of it, the chemistry, the confidence you see out of them, the body language, just a completely different squad. Harris at the free throw line. Knocks another one down. You look at his stat line, he's gotten eight points now, five assists, and he's done a fantastic job of running this team in the second half. Give him nine. 30 seconds to go, eight point game. Pembroke needs baskets and needs them in a hurry. That would have been impressive had it gone, but it didn't. And UNC Pembroke looks like they're just gonna let this one run out. RJ Sessions gets it into the front court. 17 ticking down and Ben Miller just says back away. They're just gonna let this one go. They'll come out and guard the ball and force Ty Harris to give it up. But CSU is going to get a much, much, much needed victory on their home floor tonight. 87-79, the final. And I think I'm with you. I think 
a win does big things, but a loss in this one would have been much more counterproductive than a win <laughs> is productive, as big as this win is. Yeah, this was huge. This team needed that, needed this win in a, in a bad way. And to, to come back, and I mean, this is one of those wins that you can build on in the future to play the way they did that started the game. Things look so bad to start the game, but to come back and claw your way back into it and then go through whatever it was that happened at the end of the game there and win in overtime, that's huge. UNC Pembroke still has not beaten CSU in back-to-back -back games in the series history. As BJ Battle is going to sit down with us, he had 18 points, hit four threes on the night as the Cougars win at 87-79. First off, have you ever seen anything like the way regulation ended? I've never seen it. My 10 years of basketball, I've never seen that. Let's talk, the way things have been going, it's almost seemed like one bad thing after another, bad luck with everything. Does it start to creep in your head a little bit as you all sit and talk on how things have been going? I mean, it does, but we got, we, we got to encourage each other to keep pushing that off and keep stick together as a team and just keep playing and fighting. We know that we got what it takes to win, so we just got to do what we have to do. With everything that's been going against you all, how big is it to get this one? This is a big one. We need this. We won in, well, one in four in the conference. Oh, so this is this is when we need it. You look at it, things weren't going well right out of the gate. The offense wasn't clicking. It kind of seemed like it was just a slow start. What kicked things into gear there late in the first half? Confidence. We had to keep encouraging each other. We had to keep talking and tell our players that we know we have what it takes. You go now to Young Harris. You went there last year. It's a tough <laughs> building to play in. It's a very good team. What are some of the biggest things you all have to do down there on Wednesday? We got to go in there with that, with a will, a will to win. We can't go in there and lollygag around. We have to go knowing what, that we're going to win that game. Well, BJ, 18 points for you and a big victory. Congratulations. Thank you. 87-79, CSU wins it. BJ Battle helping us wrap things up. Robert Moore will be down here eventually. 87-79 the final, and with that, CSU will be eight and five now on the season. Two and four in Peach Belt Conference play, and that's an ugly looking two and four, but it looks 100% better than one and five would have looked, especially the way this one was headed with how it ended in regulation. If you weren't watching at the end of regulation, CSU had the basketball, 72 all, and as time ticked down, Shane Hayward hit a layup with seven tenths of a second to go to put CSU in front, 74-72. Kenny Funderburk, thinking the game was over, and he can't fault him, thought the game was over, sprinted onto the floor to celebrate with Shane. And when the officials realized he was out there coming off the bench, they assessed a technical foul, and rightly so, to Columbus State giving two free throws to UNC Pembroke and Griffin Pittman with seven tenths of a second left, walked to the other end of the floor, game hanging in the balance, and knocked down both free throws that he needed to. Credit to him for doing so. That tied it at 74, sent it to overtime, and in overtime, CSU got it done from the free throw line. Shane Hayward played huge minutes down the stretch for the Cougars. He finished with a season high, 17 points, Ty Harris, was outstanding at the point guard spot at the end, making all four of his free throws in overtime. RJ Sessions played good minutes in the first half. BJ Battle, some huge shots to shoot CSU back into the game in the second half. They trailed the first 25 minutes of this game before finally taking a lead and ultimately pulled out the victory 87-79 in overtime. Quamaine Rose was the game leader. He had 22 points, 19 for Brandon Winford and 10 rebounds, 17 points for Griffin Pittman, eight for Ben Jacobs before he fouled out and then other players with five or less for UNC Pembroke. Four Cougars in double figures led by B.J. Battles, 18. 17 though for Shane Hayward. He was seven of 11 from the field and in overtime and at the end of regulation when they put the ball in his hands, UNC Pembroke, without Brandon Winford on the floor because of the foot injury, had no answer for him defensively, and he hit some of the biggest shots of the game, hit the layup that looked like the game winner at the end of regulation, and then he hits the big basket with the and one right there at the end to stretch it out to six and essentially put the game away for CSU. 13 for RJ Sessions. He had 10 of those in the first half before getting just three down the stretch. 11 then for Jermaine Morgan and eight rebounds as he played good minutes off the bench as well. Nine for Ty Harris to go along with five assists 
and eight for Kenny Funderburk. It wasn't Kenny's night. He's still trying to get back in the swing of things. He was just three of 12 from the field, but eight points. He played 28 minutes, and he'd like to have that technical foul back, but he's off the hook because his team played well in overtime and got the victory nonetheless to get to eight and five and snap a three-game losing streak. And still, in Robert Moore's four years, the Cougars have never lost four in a row. And that'll also go down as Robert Moore's 50th career victory, something he's been trying for since he got win number 49 back on December 17th. CSU for the game shoots 46% from the field. They outshoot UNC Pembroke, who shoots 41%. UNCP 7 of 24 from three. CSU was 8 of 24. And the Cougars did a nice job knocking down free throws. They were a perfect 9 of 9 from the free throw line in overtime. When they needed to make them, they did make them. 9 of 9 down the stretch, and they end up 19 of 25 for the game from the foul line, 76%, 16 of 20 from the foul line for UNCP. 87-79, though, the final. As CSU wins it to improve to 8 and 5 and 2 and 4. CSU wins it by eight as they get four guys in double figures. They'll now turn their attentions to Young Harris, going to Young Harris. That's a tough road trip to make. They'll do it on Wednesday. It's a hostile environment. It's a tough place to go in and win. They lost in overtime there, 111-107 last year in a game they had to have to get into the PBC tournament. They didn't get it and therefore didn't make it into the conference tournament. And so they're going up there trying to put a winning streak together. They're back at home Saturday where they'll take on Armstrong before Flagler comes in here on Monday. Both of those will be 1.30 and 3.30 starts here from the Lumpkin Center. Robert Moore wrapping up his duties on radio, and he'll hop down here with us and help us wrap things up here on the post-game show on Cougar Sports TV, putting the finishing touches on a big, big victory for CSU, one that they needed in the worst of ways to put them back on the right side. And for the first time, they're giving a team a taste of their own medicine after having a 10-point deficit in the first half. They come back, take the lead, and ultimately take the victory the way they've been losing games in the last few weeks. So Robert Moore's bunch gets the big victory it needs, and now they will head to Young Harris looking for a second straight win at 8-5 and five overall and 2-4 and four inside the Peach Belt Conference. So a big-time ball game tonight. You can't talk about the effort that CSU put out there because it wasn't good at the beginning, but it got much better down the stretch, and they ultimately get the victory that they were so badly needed here at the end of things as Robert Moore sits down with us as his team wins it by eight in overtime. First, Coach, let's start it off with the way regulation ended. (laughs) Had you coached in a ball game where something like that happened? Uh, Steven, I'd never seen that before in my life, Uh, and it kind of – caught me by surprise because Kenny had been in the game most of the game and I remember we took him out and then once the Shane made the bucket and I saw point seven on the clock and then I counted heads and I saw six guys up there. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And the thing about it, uh, you could tell Kenny was just so excited about us trying to win a game. It's tough to fault so, him. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know the thing about it, uh, when he ran back to the bench, they had already caught him. So that was an unfortunate thing, but we, we just got to stay a little bit more calm and you know focus. You look at it, though, the way things were going, it's just been one bad luck thing after another for you this year so far. How monumental is something like tonight to really kind of steady the ship? Oh, yeah, I I thought at times we would just kind of, and early in the game you could see that we're just throwing the ball away. We're not focused on what's going on because I think we we were kind of feeling sorry for ourselves. And I tell them I've been in this league for four years team's going to lose three in a row, four in a row, sometimes five, and you just got to keep fighting. This is one of the toughest Division II leagues in the country. If you don't have any fighting, you can't play in this league, and I think our guys understand that now, and they needed a win like this. You know, I didn't want it in overtime, but we got it, and I think this, we, this is something that we can build on. Let's talk about a couple of individuals. Ty Harris oh comes off the bench for you. You started with Derek Spear. Things quite didn't work out for him at the point. I didn't Ty think Harris had any today. energy. I didn't think Derek came out with any energy and any focus, and Ty was ready today, and I told Ty and shoot around. This is his kind of game because Pembroke was a transition team. 
Uh, and I said, just play like you played at West Georgia earlier in the year. And uh, he did some good things. And now I'm happy for him because now he can get his confidence back with Celine being out another one or two games. I think Ty can be the guy that we can go to. And we're still going to use Derrick, too. But these guys got to understand, every night we got to have guys step up. And then Shane Hayward. Oh. Shane down the stretch playing his best basketball. And it seemed like – Every time down the floor, he wanted the basketball, and there was no one that could stop him. No one could stop him. I saw, uh, I, I watched Shane play a lot in junior college, and that's the way he dominated games in junior college. And he just had that confidence tonight that he wanted the ball, and we just had to tell our shooters, get it to him. And uh, he, he did a great job tonight. How do you draw that out of him from <laughs> here on out? Is there is there a recipe for getting that out of him? I think in practice we just got to call more plays and call his number and just make sure he gets the ball, and I, I think we'll be fine. All right, Wednesday, you go on the road to uh -huh. Young Harris. It's a hostile building. It's a team, last year at least, that loved to fly up and down the floor and score a lot of points, and you had a tough one down there. What do they present to you when you walk in there on Wednesday? You know, I talked to their coach early in the year, early in the summer, and he was telling me that he thought this team this year was better than the team at last year, and it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> but the thing about it is uh, when you play teams like Young Harris, you've got to be ready to play and ready to defend. I thought our guys did a great job of that today trying to get stops. And when we get to Young Harris on Wednesday, we got to get stops on every possession and just take it play by play. And I tell our guys, you can't be looking ahead to other games. you got to take them game by game. This league is so tough, and we just got to be ready to play every night. Well, Coach, you needed a victory, and you <laughs> got one tonight. Congratulations. Good luck on Wednesday. All right. Thanks, Steve. Head Coach Robert Moore, as we wrap things up from the Lumpkin Center on Cougar Sports TV, his team wins it. 87, 79 in overtime. They're eight and five overall, two and four in conference play. UNC Pembroke falls to 11 and five and two and four in Peach Belt conference play as well. They're on the road on Wednesday night, 5:30 and 7:30 for the Lady Cougars and the Cougars at Young Harris. We're back here on Saturday, Saturday, January 18th. Armstrong will be in town for a Peach Belt doubleheader, 1:30 and 3:30, and then Monday, Martin Luther King Day, we will play 1:30 and 3:30 with Flagler in town. So those are the next time. You'll see us here on Cougar Sports TV. A good afternoon as the Lady Cougars win at 78-55. The men win at 87-79. A clean sweep for CSU on this Sunday afternoon. Glad you were with us wherever you may have been. For everyone here at Columbus State University and Cougar Sports TV, this is Stephen Williams saying so long from Columbus, Georgia.